Hello everybody! Hey, we finally got our best of 2019. And yeah, sorry that this is coming out uh, quite a bit late. Although I promise it will not come out at the beginning of 2019. Or 2021, technically. Uh, yeah, just generally the biggest issue always with these lists is because since they're so long, we tend to not have always a lot of time to be able to film it because you got to have sex every now and then we got to eat and you gotta go watch movies still to give you all sunday fun days every week if we can help it <laughs> i gotta embarrass her some ways but just generally it's kind of a bit of an issue that's the biggest thing that ever holds these up and always work because you know i would say life and stuff gets in the way yeah and life making you know <laughs> Uh, I can do nothing but embarrass her right now. Oh, but yeah, so quick preface. I think we both can agree with when it came to 2019. The movies actually were generally a lot better. When it came to the good, like it, this was a hard list for both of us. Like I flip flopped through my list about half a dozen times, if not more. I know you were constantly fighting with, well, I want to put this on there, but I can. I need to put, I want to put this on there. Yeah, I had to narrow down to like 13. I'm like, well, what two do I get rid of? And, <laughs> and that's like, after I do, after I did narrow <laughs> down, sorry, my brains are just kaput. Yeah. But after I did narrow it down, the placement. Of everything, it's like, okay, what? Did I like this one? It's like, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah, so this was at least a much more enjoyable year. Even when there were really bad movies like there was, it's still there. At least they were better than the shit that we got. Some were. <laughs> the bad movies may have been bad, but they were so much more significantly really fantastic films. And we're here to talk about them. And we're going to let the Megan lead us off, simply because I think she did, she actually was the ending for our worst of, who knows. <laughs> so we're going to let Megan give us her honorable mention. The Dirt. Molly Crew, here are we! Yeah, that Netflix movie about Motley Crue. I had to think, it's like, what the hell's the dirt again? I mentioned <laughs> it earlier while we were kind of talking about this, but it's just like, oh yeah, that movie. Well, you want to say stuff about the dirt? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I gotta give you a hard time, honey. I give me a hard time. I can just hit you out. That's all I can do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh,. Yeah, it was pretty much everything that Bohemian Rhapsody should have been. Mm hmm. What well, did help Bohemian Rhapsody was such a piss poor film. <laughs> the best yeah, it just it was this unflinching look at their life. Their life, of course, being Motley Crue. Yeah. Uh, yeah those who do not know, The Dirt is. Uh, it's based on their memoir. Yeah, well, more importantly, uh, Nikki Six's memoir. In fact, he's the narrator for this. Well, the uh, guy who plays Nikki Six yeah. is a narrator. And the guys, they got to play these, like Nikki Six and the rest of the crew. No pun intended. I was, I was that meant? <laughs> I would have meant it. But surprisingly, they were all like spot on, especially Tommy. God, the yeah. guy who played Tommy, oh my god. It's like, oh, wow. Y'all got somebody who played Tommy Lee perfect. Yeah, it's like him hitting that one chick. It's like, I do not normally advocate, you know, guys hitting women or anyone hitting each other. But that bitch deserved it. <laughs> yeah. So that that lady was heading for a goal smacking. Mm -hmm. Not even from an abusive asshole, though Tommy Lee seems to be a bit of an abusive asshole. Yeah, as he's in in real life has developed a pattern. Yeah, the, kind yeah. of the cops called on him mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah. So, 
So how does it end up on your list but not making your top 10 true? It was good. It was. But there was so much better. And there was and there was actually some stuff that just barely made it. Well, barely didn't make it, I should say. <laughs> Sorry, my brain. Again. Man, she scratched shell on my leg when she did that, too. <laughs> but, so, want me to move to my honorable mention? Mm -hmm. Uh, my honorable mention really came in late last year, of course. Uh, Rocket Man. I fully admit that I was not a big Elton John fan. I'm still not a huge Elton John fan. I can respect his music. I am not a connoisseur of Elton John. But damn if. Much like I said during it, this is what Bohemian Rhapsody should be. Mm -hmm. It's a movie that feels as big and as full of life as the person it's supposed to be about. Bohemian Rhapsody is supposed to be kind of a Freddie Mercury uh, homage in a way, you know, kind of talking about his life. But it felt so sparse, so very indirect that it just could have been rock movie. Bohemian Rhapsody was so... So did not understand what it was trying to actually do. And yeah, it's like it was sort of about Freddie Mercury, sort of about the band, and sort of about like behind the music of Bohemian Rhapsody. The Queen, sort of, not really. It's it, it didn't. It was not committal. Yeah, that's probably the biggest thing. Like it didn't know what it wanted to focus on so much. Mm -hmm. Just tell all these different stories into one. It's like. Kind of pick one narrative and stick with it. That's probably one of his biggest problems. Yeah. Especially since some of them just weren't that interesting. Here, the big story, of course, was out in John and and Taron Egerton's actually ability to channel, you know, Sir, Sir Elton John. And holy shit, is it actually really fun to watch. You feel for him. There's times whenever you realize he's being a dick, but he at least is able to come to grips with it. I still don't harm to agree with some of the things with this Marvel. It's like, oh, well, I have to admit, it's like, oh, you did your best. It's like, it's just so you have a shitty person, though. Yeah, tell him, it's like, well, because you're gay, you'll never be loved properly, or you'll end up alone. Or it's, like, it's like, that's nice. That's a real motherly thing to say. Or, like, after he's, you know, paying for all this stuff for her and her husband, it's like, oh, well, you're breaking my heart. And. So I want to move as far away from you as possible. I was like, that's nice and great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the only reason this isn't actually on the list is because as much as it was a very, very fantastically done musical, it's not my 100% cup of tea. Though I can't admit what was fantastic and great was fantastic and great. It's just not me. And that's the thing. A lot of these movies that are on this list are very much me. They fall into not just the genres I like, but they are good exemplars of the best way of to make this genre good. And how is this genre able to be watched? Well, watch this and it'll prove it to you. It'll make you a convert, I believe. So that's the only reason why Rocket Man's the low man on the totem pole. I would say Rocket Man is on my list, actually. <laughs> so, we'll move to the list proper. And let us know, Megan, what is your number 10? I know this is going to upset a lot of people. I'm annoyed that I had to put it so low on the list. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Captain Marvel. Not on my list. <laughs> it, out of all the Marvel films that came out in 2019, it was arguably the weakest. And I would say, it, even though it was, I enjoyed a lot more than our people did. Uh, one of my friends tried to say it was one of the worst uh, superhero origin films in Daredevil. And I'm like, I actually kind of like Daredevil, even though it's kind of stupid. Yeah, I mean... 
the Ben Affleck Daredevil, it's, like, it's a piece of shit. Yeah. It's just a train wreck and a half, but it's enjoyable to watch the Ben Affleck. It's actually really good as Matt Murdock. Not as good as Charlie Cox. <laughs> you know, it's like Charlie Cox has made it his own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just... <sighs> but yeah, I, but... I don't get the absolute hate on people have with Captain Marvel. The biggest issue I can say with it is, uh, oh, what's her name? The lead actress... Brie Larson? Yeah, Brie Larson. She's just a little too robotic at times. Yeah. Yeah, we'll agree with that. Like, she's a little, like... She's a little wooden. She's not, like, full-on, you know, oak table. But she is, you know, she needs a little more life breathed into her. Yeah, too controlled. And yet, she's supposed to have a big problem at the beginning of with... Like, controlling her emotions. Yeah, it's like... Eh. <laughs> like, she lets her emotions get best for her, and that's why she can't attack properly. Supposedly. Oh, you can't do it without this power. And she never asked, why does nobody else have these powers I do? It's a weird moment in the movie that never kind of brought up real well. Yeah, it's got its issues. But overall, I think it's... Enjoyable. It's fun. It's badass. It's got, you know, it's kick-ass female... And it's got humor when there's like it, like a lot of Marvel movies. It's got humor when it needs to be. It's serious when it needs to be. And hey, it's got a cat. So how else can you go wrong? Well, flirking technically. Mother flirking. <laughs> it's like all right, damn it, movie. You really got me with that one. <laughs> and we get to see how Nick Fury <laughs> lost his eye. I was originally kind of, I was really annoyed with that, but I was like, all right, damn it, it's actually very funny. When they kind of put it more into context, I'm like, all right, movie, you got me there. There's, he gets attacked by Goose. <laughs> but he doesn't tell people that. He's like, oh, I was attacked by this Kree warrior, and uh, I fought him off, and he burnt my eye, and all this stuff, and it's like, Right. Like a lot of guys would be doing in that situation. Mm -hmm. Just exaggerating. It's like, oh yeah, you should see the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I totally didn't just get taken out by a cat. Yep. <laughs> oh. And also, still gotta admit that CGI on Samuel Jackson, the DH, still holds up pretty well. Mm -hmm. And also, even, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Sam Colson. You know, or not Sam Colson. Phil. Yeah, Phil Colson. I don't like him Sam. I think his actor's name is Sam or something. I might be wrong. Probably wrong. I'm wrong about 828 things a day, so that's probably 819. <laughs> is that a good joke or something? I don't know why that's why you'd be. It just is. Uh, no, I'm not drunk or high off my mind, people. I'm just... Clark Gregg. That's yeah. an actor's name. Yeah, it's like, oh no, the actor's name if I hear it. It's like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know, Sam. <laughs> Not where Sam came from. Oh, because you were just talking about Samuel L. Jackson? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, should we move to my number 10 real quick? Mm -hmm. uh, my number 10, I can't help it. I love me some uh, cop films, especially about cops that are... You know, not 100% clean, but they still are the good guy for the most part. Torn Bridges. I will find out why tonight happened. Rep the fit. You gotta rep the fit. Like, the more I watch it, it's like a less action-packed version of a Die Hard film. Like, there is still... He's not the cleanest of all cops. He is willing to kill whenever he needs to kill. But on top of everything, Chadwick Boseman has just a presence throughout the entire movie. And he's a fucking badass throughout it. Mm -hmm. He's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Even the police force don't necessarily want to reckon with him. Yeah. You know and how hard that was my brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like I totally forgot the movie was rated R until I went to go watch in the opening 
sequence and I was like, oh, it's kind of bloody. And I was like, oh, I don't remember that this was an R. And then, and then uh, a couple instances of the F bomb. J. Jonah Jameson just was fucking and fuck, fucking like, yeah. oh, his radar. He's like dropped like four F bombs in four seconds. But yeah, I just, God, this reminds me of good 90s, like dark kind of almost noir type cop film in a way. I know it doesn't exactly make sense because it's not like, yeah, Shane, you run to dash or any other stupid stuff from noir that did age like a bad fart. But how's the best way to put this? Just it felt like a movie I would have saw in the 90s and I would have loved it. And I still loved it. Sure, it's low on the list, but that's only because all these other movies are fantastic. These are just some of the best movies that have come out in the past 10 years, maybe. And also, unfortunately, they get buried last year because they got released in a sh shit schedule of stuff and just like, alright, well, this like, is... Push back. Yeah. Thank you, STX. But, uh, yeah, it's still a fantastic movie. I mean, it should be watched by everybody. <laughs> still love the movie. Can't, can't, say, can't give Torn Bridges enough. Especially since also uh, somehow made, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, John Carter made him actually kind of intimidative. Yeah. Yeah, Taylor Kitsch. Yeah, somehow they made him actually have his ability to not have a whole lot of charisma fit the character. I'm like, <laughs> uh, especially I didn't know it was possible. <laughs> I like Taylor Kitsch. He just says, man is zero charisma. Mm. <laughs> It's like, somehow I think George Clooney was born near him, or just was near him whenever Taylor Kitsch came out born, and all of his charisma just got sucked into George. Either, you know, Dwayne Johnson, something like that. I just don't know how a guy could be so, so unforgivingly <laughs> just bland. Oh my goodness. Like, not even over the top, just meh. It's just there. <laughs> He's like, okay, it's Taylor. <laughs> You're going to eventually have like a show. Here's Taylor. He's just... Sorry, guys, <laughs> I've lost my mind. <laughs> yeah, I will say 21 Bridges is, is not on my list, but yeah, it was good. I left it. I left it a lot. <laughs> so what about you? What's your number nine? Scary stories. <laughs> Scary stories to tell in the dark. The jangling man is coming. Scary stories. Well, I messed up writing it down for some reason. <laughs> Scary stories to tell you in the dark. <sighs> this, I, my brain does not want to write that, I swear. <laughs> Didn't want to say it either. I could not bring myself to be able to end up putting it on the best of. Only because, as good as it was, I think there was better horror films. Sorry, <laughs> it kicked my <laughs> foot. But I thought there was like better stuff that kind of came out last year in terms of not just movies, but also better horror films in a fashion. I will get to it in a bit. Amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Though I will say, last year was really bereft of really good horror films. Like we had a handful. Yeah, the past few years have just been... Well, it all has to deal with the fact that Hollywood thinks that what we want out of our horror movies... Is the same regurgitated bullshit. Yeah, it's either the same crap we've seen time and time again, or it's obviously super, super cheap CGI because, oh, well, we're trying to cover up the fact that we can't, aff we don't have a budget for the damn thing. Or it's the dead don't die trying to beat us over the head with... A metaphor, it's like, you're not that deep. Um, as deep as a puddle that's about mm. maybe as long as, oh, I forgot the fucking director's name. I was going to make a joke about his dick. Uh, uh, John, um, something or not. Fuck him. Fuck that guy. I hope he doesn't ever direct a single thing in the rest of his life. He can direct a bullet to his brain. Well, I got dark. <laughs> Jim Jarmusch. There you go. Yeah, I don't that. Yeah. But hey, about the, uh, you know, scary stories to tell in the dark. 
So what what made it get on your list in your eyes? It was really creepy for like a kids horror film, especially a PG thirteen one. Mm-hmm. And it proved that like you don't necessarily have to have an R rating to be a good movie, a good horror movie. Yeah, it can help in some cases, but this pushed its PG thirteen in the best way possible. It's much like how Poltergeist probably should be an R, if not a PG thirteen. <laughs> but Poltergeist, it's a PG movie that really is probably PG thirteen. There's a few others I can think of off or I can't really think of off the top of my head, but they aren't obviously ours. You don't have to go simply for the Oh look, there's titties. You know, that flash off, but I'm so pale and pasty. You'll probably be like looking into the sun. But uh I don't wanna hear shit about pasties. <laughs> I am inside during the day the entire time. I don't see any sun. I have slowly become I ain't even in a windowless <laughs> office all day. Only time we see Yo. the sun, <laughs> only time we see the sun is when I'm going home from work. I don't even see it then. I go home at 11.30 at night. <laughs> and yet I'm still somehow pastier than you. <laughs> but, yeah, I would say, yeah, trust, it actually knows, okay, I we don't have to go for pure titillation. We are, it is based on technically a kid's, you know, young adult's book. Yeah, it doesn't have to go for pure gore, either. Mm -hmm. There's, like, maybe a little bit. More just to creep you the shit out, you know? Just be like, eh, do that. Or like the, you know, scarecrow. Who took my dog? <laughs> that, like, creeped me out. <laughs> the damn toe in the soup. <laughs> like... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was, and then the spiders. It was, <laughs> no, kill it, kill it with fire. <laughs> Why are you go goofy or something? Just a lot. <laughs> you know, your utter fear of spiders. It's not a fear. I just really, really don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So any more you want to say about scary stories to tell in the dark? No. I said my piece. <laughs> now you see, you thought you were going to piss people off with Captain Marvel. My number nine is going to piss more people off. Well, more just mean like being number ten, not being like higher on the Oh, list. actually a lot of people hate fucking Captain Marvel. People are weird. Mm -hmm. I love y'all, but you are weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my... <laughs> My number nine people also, for some reason, didn't like it. They tried to say, oh, it's really bad. I'm like, huh? we watched the same movie? <laughs> Dumbo. <laughs> I love the hell out of Dumbo. It, it grabs your heart and pulls it out of your chest and kind of pisses on it. <laughs> Which, hey, thank you for, for that, Tim Burton. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but it felt like it actually did warrant a reason for us to revisit this in live action. It felt like, one, a return to Tim Burton's form in a good way. There is still the kind of awkward way in which people will talk with each other, but it never was a detriment to the story. Like, how Johnny Depp would talk with people in the Alice in Wonderland movie... And how I can't even remember the main actress, how she would was just there and she's not doing anything. <sniffs> her just completing her deadpan detracted constantly from Alice in Wonderland. Here, the fact that. Uh, so Colin Farrell? Yeah, Colin Farrell. You know, him trying to put on this. Obviously, he's trying to be Southern accent. He's not really able to do it because he's an Irishman. You know, it kind of worked. It made it really charming. It felt very much like what this is. It felt like a movie about corny folk. And I enjoyed the hell out of that. And you did get to have the lead character, Dumbo, 
be a super emotive creature. He, yes, he was made of CGI, but they decided, okay, we're going to make sure the skin looks like an elephant and everything. But first off, his eyeballs are just the cutest damn things mm -hmm. ever. And just, uh, it makes you want to cry every time you see him because he's adorable. Yeah, and him, like, oh, like mommy? That yes. look on his face, like, hmm? Yeah, anytime mm -hmm. you hear something that sounds like an elf, elf in his ears. It was fantastic CGI, and it's one of those things where it's obvious that Lion King didn't understand what it wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I hate to keep railing against a really bad movie. But whenever you have a movie that, yeah, it knows that it was based on a cartoon. And it's like, okay, we're still going to make him look at least realistic to this world. But we're also still going to make him look like he, you know, is able to emote. Which he was able to without being, without talking, without doing anything. Mm -hmm. In fact, there were no talking animals, which is fine. This movie didn't yeah. need that. I'll say I'm fine in a live action remake if they want to have non talking animals. That's... Except I've been Lion King, that would have been weird. If it had been that, I'd been screaming for two hours. Yeah. That would have been just. I think I'm losing it. Finally breaking. Yeah, it was bad enough. Like, it's very realistic, natural geographic type animals. Like. They're also but, very. But, yeah, but they, they don't really like emote. It's like, oh hey, Dad, you got you gotta get up, you, you gotta get. Here they were able to get a lot of you know actual emotions. They were able to get a lot of feeling out of simply an elephant's kind of and just adorable. And they, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or during the one, uh, the clown scene with the fire. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, his like scaredness, obviously. He's like, oh, poor baby, he's actually holding his like, it's okay. See, it's like so freaking horrible. It's like, it just, it's like, it's hard to watch that movie. It's good, but damn, it's hard to watch. And also, here's another thing that Tim Burton has been able to learn. He kind of was messing with it now, some more I'll give him that much, even though it ended up not working. <laughs> he realized, oh, I can actually let most things not have to have a color gradient over it. And I can, there'll be some here or there, but ev but other colors will just be allowed to pop. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed the hell out of Dumbo. I loved that. Loved it. People who hate it, I saw a different movie that I fucking saw. I, you didn't like Dumbo, you're a commie. <laughs> nah, I... I I also don't get the absolute hate for it. I guess it was just like pure burnout over the fact that we're getting so many live action remakes. Mm -hmm. Two of them sort of understand, but one of them really should have waited a little bit longer. Like uh, if Aladdin came out in a year or two from now, maybe kind of could get it. You know, but yeah, last year was a little too soon, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was focused, focused just a little bit too much on... Jasmine and Jeannie and Jafar. That's like, there's not really anything left for Len. Title character. I like, I like, also didn't help the main character. He just, he was way too chipper and everything. He sounded like a four year old who just took acting lessons. Well, he was originally a model. Not saying that all models cannot act, but. Then we need to beat him until he learns how to act. Don't, don't beat your models. Took a dark, violent turn. No, just here's the thing. Don't cast models. And the guy who does Jafar, don't ever do work ever, ever again. But go see Dumbo. Dumbo's fantastic. If you haven't seen it, don't listen to naysayers. It actually improves on the original in my eyes. The only thing different I maybe have an issue against is somewhat how they did the pink elephant scene. But even then, what they were able to do with it still was actually quite beautiful. Yeah, it was actually brilliant. And mm -hmm. Like you said, it was it was actually really pretty. Yeah, it at least fit the you know context of this thing. So, oh, Dumbo got drunk. It's like, oh, it's a random ass element that happened in the movie. <laughs> yeah. So, what about you? What about your number eight? 
Shazam! Sorry about your window, but night. you're welcome for not getting robbed. Oh, hey, what's up? I'm a superhero. Shazam did not make my list. The more I thought about it, I fucking hate that issue with his mom. And mm -hmm. just the, how the whole resolution for that is. Because mm -hmm. there isn't one, really. It's like, thanks, I'm just like, baby. Yeah, you got lost, but I... I wanted to lose you, so fuck off. I was like, I didn't want you at the time, so I just thought you were better off, and now I have a whole other family, and please just go away and don't complicate things. Yeah, it's like, okay, I can understand that, you know, best way I can look at it is like, it would be one thing if we had any way to save this lady. Not that every character needs saving. But it's like, she's the worst villain the DC Universe has. Burma's just trying to find an excuse for him to stay with his foster family. Yeah, and it was a bad excuse. I mean, maybe what they should have done is just, like, oh, turns out she's dead. Yeah, just let her be fucking dead. It's fine. You know, and, and let him, you know, realize he has a family who already does care for him still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he cares enough to even help him in his search for his mother. Mm-hmm. Even though they, they know that even if he does find her and she does decide to take him back, I mean, it's like they lose their brother. Yeah. He's very selfless. Yeah. But now uh, they decide to... And also, I think it just didn't help that uh, Freddy at times is a little insufferable. Yeah, both the kids are kind of... But they're kids. They're not being real if they're not annoying little shits from time to time. You just want to hold them down until the bubbles quit coming up. And was it Zachary Levi? Yeah. He plays adult Shazam? Yeah, he can play a teenager way too well. And I was like... He, him and... Who was it? Freddy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like... The way they play off each other sometimes, it's like... Oh my god, you annoying little teeny shit. Shut up. Until you realize Zachary Levi's four years old. Yeah, he plays a teenage boy way too well. Yeah, he's been a man child his whole life, so I expect. Could be worse. Not sure how, but you know. I mean, he wasn't too much of a man child in Tangled. Yeah, he was a bit of a man child. A bit, little bit of one, but not too much of one. I'm sorry, Zachary Levi just turned. He's turned 40 this year. Old year, kids. <laughs> so, anything else you want to say about Shazam? Well, actually, what did you really enjoy about the film, though? What would say? Well, much like with any movie, I enjoyed the humor. For the most part. And I did enjoy the heart. Like the whole family, you know, just. I'm the idea of family by choice. Mm hmm. And everybody's kind of. I don't know, they're just kind of rallying around each other and. It's like, okay, yes, we're not biologically related, but, you know, we still love you, we still look out for you, we still got your back. Yeah. Everything is like, oh, just so sweet. And yeah, the two foster parents, like, yeah, I can see that <laughs> being us as foster parents. It's, just a, it's like, oh, just mention that you're adopted. Call just eat that shit up. It's like, <laughs> give that kind of corrupting advice. I am cute and innocent. <laughs> <sighs> you know, you don't really need a skylight, honey. <laughs> oh, do we want to move to my number eight? Mm, e sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to sound like a pandering asshole. I can't help it. I, I actually really love this movie. Once upon a time in Hollywood, it hit... Hey! You're Rick fucking Dalton. Don't you forget it. Just that right spot for me. Yeah, that is on my list. Is a little bit. <laughs> I 
like we've said before, I usually fucking hate some of Quentin Tarantino's masturbatory mm. bullshit he likes to put in there. It's like, I know so much about movies. Oh, congratulations. Fuck it. Yeah, Pulp Fiction was just so overrated. It's like, nothing is happening. Well, the biggest issue of Pulp Fiction is it wants to tell you a bunch of different stories. Very few of them are very well connected to each other. Or at best, like, there is a tenuous connection between them all. But one of them outright is just, it doesn't have any resolution, really. Except for, he leaves. Or the whole thing Which, with Uma, Uma Thurman. Thurman. That's kind of what I was saying. Yeah, Uma Thurman, John Travolta. First of all, she's never seen or heard from again. And second of all, he gets, gets killed. killed, like, the very next day by Bruce Willis. Like, what? Well, why, you know, thanks for wasting our time, Tarantino. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. But, I don't know, it just, it worked here. When there was the self-masturbatory stuff, it worked. It's a movie about Hollywood. Hollywood. So that kind of, you know, shtick, it's fine. It works here. And even then, it wasn't the crux of the movie, which was fantastic. I'm like, okay, you managed to make this about Hollywood. You know, make it about the fantasy element. Once upon a time, you know. Mm -hmm. Make it a fantastical tale. And you also managed to kind of fuck around and subvert, you know, what critics want to see nowadays. Or what critics that people always want to say. It's like, we need strong female characters over all men characters. Like, that works in a... Wonder Woman, uh, Captain Marvel works in a Batwoman or Batgirl kind of thing, but it does, it's not going to make sense in a Captain America movie. Sure, it's good to have a strong woman, but she shouldn't be the lead character, no offense. It's like, I'm going to catch some flack here, but the idea that the fourth Thor movie is going to focus on Jane Foster is really still kind of bothersome to me. I'm like, I get it, Marvel. Get what you're doing here. Don't. <laughs> Just don't. Yeah, I'll say, like, Thor and Jane, they were sweet together. But overall, I think Jane is not really that compelling of a character to want her own movie. She's not getting her own movie. She's going to be taking over lead by what it seems. Well, over Thor. That's what I mean. Because she's going to become Thor. It's a whole thing they did in the comics, and it was stupid then. It's going to be stupid on screen. Why not have Valkyrie? She'd be a much better choice for Thor. First of all, she can actually kick ass. And she's funny. And she can call Thor on his bullshit. Because they don't think that hard. <laughs> but yeah, uh... To go back to what I was talking about, what's about done and but I do like it subverts the idea. It's like, oh, hey, we're going to talk about the Manson killings. And, aha, no, we're not really. Because it's a fantasy still. Like, even one of my friends, she was kind of confused on it. She's like, oh, this isn't anything like what really happened. I'm like, yeah, that it's was the idea. It's yeah, alternate history, kind of a. Yeah. Like, well, just by existing. Um, was it Leonardo, Leonardo, yeah. Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio? Yes. Leonardo DiCaprio's character is like he pretty much prevents the mm -hmm. Manson killing. It's like, and you know what? I'm okay with that because the way that the Manson family gets killed it is so it, satisfying. Yeah, it's just so hilariously over the top. It's like, you know, it's played for laughs. It just. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's like. Like flamethrower. <laughs> yeah. You kill a motherfucker with a flamethrower while and they're in a pool. pool. <laughs> in unison. Yeah, I was like, it's hilarious. And, you know, as good as Leonardo DiCaprio is in this movie. It's the Brad Pitt show. I would say Brad Pitt just steals the show. Yeah. Like, the fact that he ended up winning Oscar for supporting actor does not surprise me. Though I'm really surprised they didn't have him technically as the lead. Cause like he really kind yeah, of yeah was... yeah focuses a lot on him more than Leo. Mm-hmm. But that's another thing. It's like Leo could have been a despicable, you know, kind of sniveling 
kind of not really interesting and you know, hate him a lot actor. Instead, they kind of made him really fucking sympathetic. You, mm -hmm. you understood him. You fell for the poor guy. He, He's like just trying so hard to get his big break and break into Hollywood, break into movies. And... Well, he not just really big break. He wants to stay relevant. It's Yeah, it's what every actor dreams of. Yeah, well, every director as well. They want to stay relevant. Don't be like the poor guy who did Die Hard. I had to look that up and I was like, what are his last three movies? Oh, 13th Warrior, uh, Rollerball, and, and fucking Basic. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was not three movies to go out on. Uh, but yeah, I just, I fucking love the movie. Yeah, I'll say about the Bruce Lee portrayal that everyone's getting up in arms about. It's like, it's a fantasy. It's an alternate history. It's... And also, here's the thing. A lot of people even said Bruce was a lot full of himself. Hell, the fucking... Maybe not to that extent, but it... I think someone even said, like, yeah, he was, like, a little bit full of hubris. You know, he thought he was tough shit, but, you know, like, it's more exaggerated in the movie. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's like, hello, it's a movie. Yeah. It's not supposed to be a, a biographical film all about Bruce Lee. It's an alternate history, a fantasy. Yeah, it's... A fantasy so, about two actors who end up somehow magically defeating the Manson family. Yeah, it's supposed to kind of show off how badass, uh, was it Cliff? Brad Pitt's character? I believe so. I know the character named Cliff, I can't remember if that was Brad Pitt's character or Leo. But, show off how badass Brad Pitt is. Yeah, and here's the thing, you actually kind of forgive the fact that he might be a wife murderer. But to be fair... You almost don't blame him. It's like, God, how did you marry that? It's like, dude. Yeah, I was like, I don't blame you if you did. It's like, ooh. It's like, I probably would have killed her myself. <laughs> you just wake up, oh, I'm covered in blood. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's all I want to say. I want to just keep talking about how fantastic Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is. And we already suck it, suck it, suck Sucked his dick. Now I went straight and down all the way to the balls. Just deep there with that cock. Well, we already sucked his dick when we did the review. Yeah, Where's I'm doing more. There you go, Quentin Tarantino. I loved another one of your movies. Happy. <laughs> oh. So, what about you? What's your number seven? Zombieland Double Tap. <laughs> I will give more of my feelings on it here in a bit. Just put it mildly. I would say I like the original Zombieland. I don't remember too much about it. Like, without having to go back and watch it. But, yeah, Double Tap was... It was funnier. It was better than any of the first one. Well, because they had this already established family... Dynamic. Yes. And, like, just the, like, almost like father-daughter kind of relationship of, like, trying to track her down, well, one, to get his vehicle back, and two, to pretty much beat the shit out of the boyfriend. Like, you know, like any, you know, responsible father would do. Mm-hmm. Especially when you start dating a damn hippie. It's like, oh no, he's from California. <laughs> <laughs> Plays acoustic guitar. God damn it, that's funny. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god, it's my worst fear. She's dating a hippie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll give more of my opinions about it here in a bit. Like I said, there should be more. Is there more you want to say about Zombie Land Double Tap? <laughs> Sorry, let's <laughs> right out of air quickly. Uh, I will say the one blonde chick 
Uh, they're like, oh my god. The, oh, the new, the, oh, what's her name? I can't remember her name. It's like, yeah, I can't yeah, the, yeah, the bimbo. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the one who um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg sleeps with. Yeah, when uh, Emma Stone leaves for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you would think she would be all kinds of annoying, and she kind of is, but it's... It's like, she's actually kind of funny, or at least everyone's reactions to her, like, oh my god, seriously. It... I believe, her, I believe that is, her name is Madison. Yeah, it's yeah, Madison. Madison. I know some bimbo name. Yeah, Madison. I, I want to talk more about it, but I got, I got to save it. Save. Yeah, she easily could have been annoying, and she was, but... It was kind of the point. She was annoying in the way she was supposed to be annoying. Yes, it's not like, oh my god, just kill her off already. Mm-hmm. Like, you're almost wondering, how are you alive? Moments constantly. Mm -hmm. I was like, how are you smart enough to figure out to, you know, camp out in a mall freezer? And also, how does that freezer have power near a zombie apocalypse? Hey, again, it's one of those things that's just like, roll with it. <laughs> that's... Alright, so, I didn't piss y'all off enough with Dumbo. Because my number seven, Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker. I will admit to one flaw that I will fully understand. The movie's beginning is a little... Hold on, wait, wait, hold, uh, wait let's just do it. Stop doing stuff. Just sit still for five fucking seconds, please, and let me figure out what the hell's happening. The first 15, 20 minutes kind of go by really way too fast. Yeah, and it really kind of like drops you in the middle of everything, and it's like, okay, go. Yeah, and it's like, whoa, 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 what's happening? It's like, what, what the fuck? What the what? Who's that? Why is this that? What? What? It's kind of how I felt watching the first episode of The Mandalorian. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> but after the movie slows itself down, it actually finally figures out, you know, how to actually tell a compelling Star Wars story. Sure, if you boil it all down, it's simply kind of like a fetch quest in the best way to put it. But if you do many movies, it's that way. All the Indiana Jones movies, with the exception of Temple of Doom, which sucks ass to begin with, they're all fucking fetch quests. Kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly, it's like you actually get numerous character developments for different people, and you also get some character you know, resolutions with different people, such as Poe. You get to see some resolution for his character, what he's been going through. You get to have, of course, stuff with Ray and... Uh, Oh, what the hell's his name? Ben? I want I want to call him Ben, but uh, well, technically that is his name. Well, his Kylo Ren. Yeah, Kylo <laughs> or Emo Ren. <laughs> well, a lot of people call him, and see that's the thing. It's like a lot of people want to hate Kylo. It's like that's the thing. He is the epitome of what a real Sith would be. I don't know. People are like, oh no, Darth Vader was. Darth Vader was controlled in his own emotions because he was a Jedi. He was taught to have those emotions in check. Don't allow them to get the best of you until, in his eyes, till you can use them to your fullest strength. Ben, instead, was constantly told, to be, thanks to the pushings by uh, what turns out to be Palpatine, to live on those emotions use them to guide you use them as your feel the hate flowing through you yeah but even more than that a big thing with you know sith if people want to stick with something sorry i'm going to rail low on star wars and people not understand its own lore sith are the they're all about the excess of feelings you know and enjoying the most love the enjoying the most hate or anything it's not just about being evil Though Palpatine kind of is. Kind of the Slytherins of the Jedi. No, Jedi. The Force. Yeah. it's They are all about letting, living to the extremes and not holding stuff back. And 
I don't know why people are not getting it. It's like, yeah, Ben's going to then be really... Uh, you got to imagine that that much just being told to bury into your emotions and only let your emotions guide you, it's going to make you a little crazy. And that's kind of how it ends up making Kylo Ren throughout the entire thing. And it works. Him And also his redemption, you actually give a shit about it. Mm-hmm. And like, like I even said during a review, the biggest sin against the movie... Beyond, obviously, the first 15, 20 minutes, I'm like, okay, please slow down, please, movie. You're getting me lost. But is that The Last Jedi happened to be the movie that preceded it, and The Last Jedi just didn't build a good foundation for it? Last Jedi was a decent Star Wars side story, not an actual full part of the saga. And I think that's something they're going to have to figure out now, since they have finished the saga in their eyes. Mm -hmm. But I I cannot hate the movie. I fucking loved it a lot. There is just... It's got fantastic action. And there is still always fan, just some wonderful CGI action being used. Even though some people are like, oh, you could use the little models. Eh, that's not how some things are done. And yes, the fight sequences and choreography are really good. Never felt a little over the top like uh, the first... Three Star Wars movies. Of course, that'd be in episode one, two, and three, of course. I'm not talking about four, five, and six. Where their choreography was very pop. I hate your sword. I hate your sword. One, two, and three, where it's flips and shit. <laughs> this one felt like a perfect medium between them all, I think. In terms of how the uh, lightsaber choreography was. They're still fighting and bashing and sometimes jumping a little bit. But they're not like... That's why I put it. They're not Dragon Ball Z fighting and like, exterior, like kicking and shit like that at each other. Can't get what I mean? No, no. Kind of do, but kind of don't because I'm a little. I'm sleepy. You're always a little sleepy. Eh. But yeah, it's just. It, I don't know. I know people really wanted to hate on it and they're like, I had to live up to my expectations. Because you already had your idea of what it was supposed to be and you never let the movie be itself. Same issue I said with people with Episode 8. Even though I still say Episode 8 is probably one of the more inferior films. Yes, I'm fickle like that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm still going to put it. I totally am. I am not ashamed of it. <laughs> oh, so let's move on to Megan's number six. While I reach in front of the camera, because I need a drink. <laughs> Good ass. My number six, we've uh, already discussed. Mm-hmm. Once upon a time in Hollywood. I hired you to be an actor, Rick. Not a TV cowboy. You're better than that. <laughs> Dwan? What a surprise. <laughs> So. I don't think there's anything more that needs to be said, so let's move on to your number six. Oh, I am such a nerd. I can't help it. The movie is fucking fun. Godzilla King of the Monsters. This is Godzilla's world. We just live in it. Damn right. God damn it, I love that movie so much. It, how can you go... Oh, like too much humans, though. Eh, not so much too much humans. It's just that the humans are not super interesting. I wouldn't have minded... I think more monsters. I think there was just the right amount of monsters to human action. Because you still need that... Alright, we need to breathe for a second. Because as much as I love me some Godzilla beating the shit out of uh, King Ghidra. Or Ghidorah, or whatever you want to fucking call him. As much as I love that, I need some breathing room because eventually I'm going to explode. Mm. You know, I can only get so hard, you know. But, oh, God, this movie, it was so much fun. I don't know how else to describe it. And that's the reason why I can put it really high on my list, but I can't put it like an upper echelons. Because as fun as this movie is, as much as it's a callback to some of the best Godzilla movies in my mind. I mean, it's still just that. It's a bit just all about fun. It didn't 
de reached deep down into my core. It did reach my childhood, though, and it went, hi. Yeah, I was Godzilla kid. What can I say? <laughs> I reiterate. Nerd! Oh, I fully admit that. <laughs> I accept all my nerd points. <laughs> Yeah, if you have not seen Godzilla King of the Monsters because people are like, oh, it's kind of stupid. It's like, it's a Godzilla movie. What the fuck were you expecting? Shakespeare? I still not understood people who are like, oh, this is kind of dumb. I'm not even a Godzilla person. And I don't get some of the people's criticisms like, oh, there's not enough people and too many monsters. like, yeah, people are pissing on that there are too many monster fights. In a monster don't... movie. Yeah, it's like... What the hell did you expect? I'm watching this porn. There's too much sex in it. The fuck? Why am I like, not I need watching more this of a wonderful story. acting? It's like, I need better acting. I need more of a story. Like, yeah, you Just, just jerk off and fuck off. Yeah, get your sock on your cock and get it off. I didn't mean for that to be a rhyme. just can't get out that way. Ed, that's a new one, honey. No, you don't know about the jerking off in the sock thing? No, just the, oh. the phrase. Oh, that. that's just me through it. I made that because I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but let's move on to your number six. Or, your number five. Sorry, I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> My number five. Really wish I had a prop for this one, but... Knives out. <laughs> what happened to my grandfather? I think you have something you want to tell me. <laughs> I... Oh, I rolled my list. <laughs> I struggled between it and uh, 21 Bridges as my number 10. And I just I couldn't keep Knives out. I just I love 21 Bridges just a smidge more. It's like picking your favorite kid. Eventually one of them's got to get shot in the head, but you know. Yeah, 21 Bridges was good, but I think Knives Out was better. Eh, it's your opinion. This is my opinion. That's just why it's a contentious top ten. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, like, it's kind of annoying that they revealed the killer, killer so early on, revealed what happened. But then they just kind of roll with it of... Just trying to cover it up and uncover the fact that, oh, she was not actually behind it after all. Yeah. It's a smart, uh, whodunit is the best way to put it. Yeah, it's, and, it, it's inventive. It. Yeah, it's a new kind of whodunit. It's a mm -hmm. whodunit for the ages, for the, for our ages, for whatever. Whodunit for the millennials. <laughs> yeah, for the, for the new new oh, kids on the block. Fuck a duck. That's really quacky, you know. Oh uh, my god! My... Are you just so, quacking up now? Maybe. I'm not. I'm not gonna stop with the duck yeah, puns for just, a few it, hours. Sorry, it's warm in here. It's frying my freaking brain. On top of my brain already just. <laughs> I promise I will not shoot my load that hard in your mouth next time. <laughs> I am so bad. Yes. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I really hope my family is not watching this. <laughs> oh, God. I hope your family isn't watching this. Nice shirt. But... <laughs> So what you want to say about Knives Out after I've embarrassed you? Yes. It was funny. Somehow it just... It's kind of crazy. And mm -hmm. kind of good acting all around. Especially from uh, Chris Evans. Chris Evans pulls off an asshole way too well. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can kiss my ass. You can kiss my ass. like... And the family reunions. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Chris Evans is good. Uh, Don Johnson's good. Uh, 
Zod. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Shannon is good. Jamie Lee Curtis is really good. Just Tony Collette with her, like, oh, you're famous. Like, it's weird because the last movie we watched that she was hereditary. in was hereditary. It was like a. Yeah, her. Yeah, it was like the. Really, the only thing I'd seen her in up to that point. It's like, what the f What? <laughs> I like seeing Tony Collette in a lot of things. I swear. Get this to go. But yeah, everyone was just. On point acting wise, Daniel Craig as this kind of he it's like he doesn't miss anything, but at the same time he misses everything. <laughs> kind of detective. He he is a perfect <laughs> Southern fried gentleman that you would expect. And I don't know how he actually did that accent. It's like okay, this isn't annoying at all, and it's actually kind of charming. And it's how? not really like too like stereotypical. It just yeah, it just sounds like a dude doing a it, you know doing a Southern accent. Yeah, it's like you picked a region and it's like, there, I'm going to try and sound like from that state. <laughs> it's not the call thing that poor Andrew Lincoln tried and it's like, God, that does not work, dude. I don't know what part of Atlanta you think you're from. That ain't it. Oh, well. But yeah, just... <laughs> I always detract. <laughs> yeah... Good acting, it's funny, a good mystery, and I don't know, it was just, it was a good movie. Yeah, I must say, it and, was really good, it missed on my list by that much. And I'm excited over the fact that, is it Ryan Johnson? Has decided to make it into a series focusing on Daniel Craig's character. Yeah. It's like, I'll, I'll watch it, I'll see it. I'll I say, I'll give him my money. <laughs> so, should we move to my number five? Sure. All right, well, we're going to just swing on into this one. And it's Spider-Man Far From Home. Are you going to step up or not? I... I don't know what else can be said that hasn't been said before about the film. It's one of the best Spider-Man movies. One of the best Spider-Man sequels. Sorry, Spider-Man 2 is kind of not the greatest Spider-Man sequel. Y'all want to pretend it is. Eh. Of course, there's no stiff competition against me in Spider-Man 2. <laughs> but on top of everything, dear God, does Tom Holland just... He's such a dork. <laughs> Him and MJ are just dorks and they're so dorkable it's like oh my god you're kiss 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 yeah it's like he really pulls off both the like youthful awkward dork but also like oh my god i lost my father figure and now i'm trying to figure out how to do the superhero thing mm -hmm. on my own it's like he really he it, it's a balancing act, and he's he's really like he's walking that tightrope. Yeah, and I would say that it, those who have not, I oh, want might spoil the movie a little bit. Those who have not read any of the comic books, I think the surprise of who the villain ends up kind of being, and it maybe is kind of given away a little bit, but it's still, dear God, is Jake Gyllenhaal just such a despicable asshole? Mm -hmm. Like he somehow managed to. Channel all of his Jake Gyllenhaalness into the best Jake Gyllenhaal character. Yeah, I just want to punch him in the face every time you see him. So we realize just how much of a douchebag he is. And also, I gotta give them props for doing a Mysterio and actually being able to get his constant thing that he does with Spider-Man, which is always pretty much play a lot of mind games with Spider-Man, and they do it in such the trippiest way possible, and it feels so true to the character. And I just, ah, oh, this is fantastic. I love it. I love it a lot. Yeah, you don't know what's real and what's not. Yeah. You don't know who you can trust. Yeah, and hell, I, st I still don't think he's dead. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> you waste on the ending, I don't think the man's dead. I think he is. I think that whole thing about Spider-Man's identity was uploaded by his henchmen. 
Who knows? Because he pissed them all off, so who knows? I don't know. I just, I love Spider-Man Far From Home. It was one of the best Spider-Man movies we've had in a while. And that's saying something, because Spider-Man Into the is also a fantastic fucking Spider-Man movie. So it was even Homecoming, which I loved as well. Somehow it's better than those. Yeah, Michael Keaton was pretty good as the... Michael Keaton is fantastic at everything. Michael Keaton's going to kill it in Morbius, and he's going to be on screen for four minutes, if that long. <laughs> it's like, it's just Michael Keaton... I can't help it. Michael Key, I just love him. I want him to be a more. Yeah, he's he's really versatile. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, he's actually really got a charisma to him. I'm like, damn, I can't try and swing that story back around. <laughs> swing not meant for this movie. Sorry. Some of my puns are intended. I would say pun not intended. Yeah, that pun was not intended. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I want to really say about Spider-Man Far From Home. It's one of the best movies, but I will say there's just a few that were able to edge its way above it. At least in my eyes, even though it was one of the best comic book movies we had last year. So, I'm going to move to your number four. Look at that. Spider-Man Far From Home. <laughs> so Far From Home, he moved one space in yours. <laughs> <laughs> Any more you want to add on to it, or we just moving into my my number four? Yeah, I was thinking about Mysterio. He... Probably not the greatest Spider-Man villain we've ever had. He's not Electro. Yes, that's true. I was actually just about to bring it up. Or that. I was right now. Like... Forgot about that. Or Green Goblin from Maze and Spider-Man too. Or Venom. Or Sandman. Though I will still admit Sandman sequence was really cool. I think it's like, shut it. Wafu. <laughs> She's gonna punch me in a dick here in a bit. I went from an Audi to an Innie. And look at that, you went through puberty again. I was making a joke about you punching me in the dick that hard. It's jokes so on a joke. <laughs> I am talking about like the balls too. Yeah, that's what I'm making the, a joke. The... No, that's, that's just why I made that joke. That's why I made the joke about you crazy. going through puberty. It's crazy. <laughs> what are you saying about Mysterio? Mm. Yeah, he's just he's. I mean, finally revealed his true colors. He's just such an asshole. It's like, oh my god, I want him to punch your lights out. Ugh. Well, he does. Ugh. He, he gets his comeuppance. I know. I saw him. <laughs> I'll say, that's, that's the thing. That's the mark of a good villain. He makes you want to punch him. It's like, oh, uh, what's his name from uh, AEW who flips off kids? So, oh, you're such an ass. I love it. Hmm? There's a... Okay, so AEW is a wrestling course. There is one of the heels, bad guys. He is just... He stays heel all the time. Like, even out in, like, signings and stuff like that in public, he, he stays, stays in character. He's, he stays in kayfabe. And... Like, they, uh, this recent, like, convention they was at, like, parents asked if his kids can take a picture, and he's sitting there doing this at the kid's face. It's like, damn, man. It's like, damn. Gotta give you some props for staying in kayfabe there. I'm a nerd. You know, in case we hadn't already established this in the rest of the... In the video, I'm gonna say the movie. <sighs> <laughs> like I said, he's the perfect heel. I can't remember the guy's name. It's gonna really bug me now. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was saying, like, like the reveal of these villains, like, it's kind of almost predictable. Like, he almost had me believing him, and then he was like, 
Wait, I knew it. <laughs> I knew you couldn't be trusted. Well, his name is Mysterio. There's a rrr, so. Well, I mean, Doctor Strange is not quite so strange. Yeah, but that's his name. His name is Stephen Strange. I mean, it it would be one thing if, like, his name was was Doctor Do Magic. God, that'd be horrible. Or oh, there was one guy. His like little name was what he went by, and it was like the most over the top villain things ever. And you're like, you're such a villain. It's like you had no choice because you're what Victor Von Doom. Ah, oh, there's one. <laughs> Like, that one's on the nose. <laughs> it's like, I wonder if he's the bad guy. It's like, yeah, he has no choice with a, given a name like that. Oh, hell, what about, or one of other Fantastic Four's better known villains, Annihilus. His name is Annihilation in all es essence. He has no choice. He's got to be a bad guy. He can't be good. <laughs> Whatever Annihilus is, he might be a guy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, see, he, like he's a little weak, Mysterio, as far as being a villain. But other than that, yeah, I did enjoy. Like, like I said, Tom Holland, like, he's such a dork at times. Like, it's like, yeah, you come across like a teenager, even though you're like in your twenties. Mm -hmm. And then he still looks like he's. <laughs> yeah, poor guy couldn't buy his own beer, even though he is of age. Mm-hmm. How do you get Chris Hemsworth? Yeah, I think Chris Hemsworth and Chris Hemsworth had to keep buying his drinks for him. Yeah. It's like, here, I will give you money. Get me my beer, please. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tom Holland. Yeah. <laughs> but also, like, the gravitas of trying to fill Tony Stark's shoes is just... Well, because eventually he realizes he doesn't really need to fill Tony's shoes. He just needs to... Be the hero that Tony knew he could be. Mm -hmm. That's always the thing with Iron Man. Or Tony, I always believe that, you know, you're only as good as a hero as you can truly wish to be. Yeah, the movie, like the character, has gravitas, but there's also that lighthearted, youthful exuberance. Mm hmm. It just, it perfectly balances. Yeah, I believe so. A little bit of a weak spot in Mysterio, but. I personally didn't mind it, but that's because I grew up on Spider-Man comics and Mysterio. He was one of my favorite Spider-Man villains, personally. Like, y'all don't realize how happy I am not to see Green Goblin. Again. I, I, I don't need to see Green Goblin ever again for a bit. Y'all don't give me a few weeks from Norman. <laughs> a few movies, at least. So, do we move to my number... Although, mm -hmm. although Willem Dafoe did... He killed it, but that's because <laughs> Willem Dafoe is... Uh, Freak of nature. He's he is bad shit nuttier than saying. squirrel turds. <laughs> and he's got a giant schlong too. It is yeah. freakishly big. <laughs> I just wanna go, how? <laughs> what is the ugly weird dude's got the <laughs> I don't know, let's go ask Ron Jeremy and see what's up. Uh, so, okay, should we, we move to my number four? Say, what are we going? Yeah, number four. Uh, I can't help it. This is the reason why this is so high. And it is one of the best anime films that came out last year. Dragon Ball Super Broly. Getting stronger! Somehow, you made one of the arguably dopiest but still kind of cool characters in all Dragon Ball. You can actually relate to him. He, They also made him more than just a meathead. They gave him some kind of depth. And not only that, but dear God, this movie is just gorgeous to look at. My eyeballs loved every second of it. Like I said, the biggest sin against the movie is that you almost want a bigger break from the action time. You're like, 
Oh, I can only come so many times, maybe. Let me give me a break. Let me drink some Gatorade. It's just, it's head from beginning to end. It's one of the best films that's ever been put to animation. Hands down. I am no hyperbole. And it is the best Dragon Ball film. No, I, I still love some of these other ones, but it's it's the best. I'm sorry. It kind of is. <laughs> uh, and I just, that, I love it so, so much. Go see it. If you have not had a chance to go see it, go see it. Even if you're not a Dragon Ball fan. Yes, I'm a nerd. Yeah, no, I'm good. Me. I'm not going to go see it. I'll show it to you. I got it on DVD. Actually, on Blu-ray. I know. I got it for you for Christmas. <laughs> Hey, you like Battle of the Gods. <laughs> I still have no idea why you say I'm such a boma. I have such a violent tendency. <laughs> so. To that, I say. <laughs> what about you? What about your number three? What is your three? Well, we already kind of covered this. Mm hmm. Rocket man. But he's trying to do something bold. Why are you still something flashy? Can you even play the piano in those? Let him know who you are. And at the sheets of Pamela. I know that's not the words. I don't care. That's what I hear. What the hell am I gonna do with you? Love me. <laughs> It just makes me realize like I'm a lot taller than you, and I'm really not. <sighs> You're what, maybe a couple inches taller than me? I'm about three inches taller than you. <laughs> maybe four. One, five, three. Oh, then I'm five inches taller than you. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I told you I'm a short shit, I'm a dumb shit. <laughs> uh, He's just short. <laughs> you're not dumb, you're just a little dopey. Big nerd. <laughs> So, more you want to add about Rocket Man? From what I went on about earlier? Yeah, I think one thing we didn't mention mm -hmm. is that Taryn Edgerton, like, just really captured Elton John's essence. I mean, I know you said that he channeled him. I was like, yes, he does. Like, yes, mm -hmm. he channeled his essence. He, like, really just captured his mannerisms perfectly. Sometimes, like, Okay, am I watching Taryn Edgerton or am I watching Elton John? Almost like, I mean, not even as bad as uh, James Franco and the Disaster Artist. That was creepy how well he pulled off Tommy Wiseau yes, at it's times. Like, it's, like, it's like, wait, which is which? <laughs> like when they did the side by side at the end, it's like, wait, which one's Tommy Wiseau? Which one's James Franco? What, what the fuck? <laughs> which one is the weird European thing zombie? <laughs> oh, there's James Franco. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Jokes, I got him. Um, yeah, and I just, I, I like the, it's like Taryn Edgerton like does his own singing in this, like, but he sounds just like Elton John's, like I thought, I think we both thought that it was just Elton John playing and him just kind of like lip syncing. Yeah, that's what I thought at first, but no, I looked it up and that's like it's no, Taryn like, Edgerton. No, Taryn Edgerton's like lip syncing to his own self. Yeah, I was like, like oh, hmm. I was like, good on you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just it's so weird how he manages to. To capture this guy's like, and like I said, I love that it's like such an unflinching look at Elton John's life. I mean, yeah, they took some dramatic license here and there, but like, from what I read, his dad's not quite that much of an asshole. Yeah. But, but still, it just, and I love the metaphor of him. In rehab, slowly stripping himself down and just bearing his soul. Yeah. So he just. I, I don't know, everything about it was like kind of perfect. Mm hmm. Okay, 
So. Uh, my number three, I went through just last like two, three months of uh, 2019. Well, not the greatest is the best way to put it. And I had one movie, though, that really brought me together and gave me not just a good laugh, gave me a heartwarming story, and just brought me out of every dark area it could be. And I watched it again. Okay, does it hold up still despite my, you know, where I was and it helped out a bit? It's even better, I think. Because Dolomite is my name. <laughs> God damn, Dolomite. Great God in heaven, you know I It's about a, you know, guy who's actually really interesting to learn a lot about. I am sorry if I cannot pronounce his name correctly. I am just going to call him Dolomite, but Eddie Murphy is able to channel him. Eddie Murphy is not only that, but he's fantastic in this role. Like, any, all the awards that he was nominated for, he deserved every second of that. And somehow he makes this character, this actor who was a character actor in and of himself, him make he makes it his own still. And he and it's not only that, but it's a very honest telling of the story. There's not really exaggerations here or there. Here about certain things. The most that some people argued with was uh I cannot remember the name of the guy that Wesley Snipes plays. Yeah, Wesley Snipes is in this movie too. And dear God, is Wesley Snipes awesome. Well, he's got to get some money. You mean, he he's goes to RS. Yeah. But he plays a drunk. <laughs> it's. Dear God, is it. Just playing himself. Yeah. <laughs> dear God, it's just. It's fantastic. It's one of the best movies about making a movie that has come out since Disaster Hours, I would say. And it's. Unflinchingly, like, just. It feels like they understood that, hey, we're not going to sit here and try and take a lot of liberties with certain things. If there is any liberties taken, I they had to be minute. They had to be small things, if anything. They're what, it felt like this was truly about this guy's life. And, dear God, it's, like I said, it's just it's the best thing we've had in a while. If you have not watched Dolomite Is My Name, because you're not sure, because you're like, I'm not into B-movies. Just watch it because it's a fantastic movie. Production value, er acting, everything. It's top notch. Yes, love the movie. It's the best. <laughs> but what about you? What is your number two? I didn't mean for that to rhyme. I'm not a leprechaun. Uh, I'm surprised this wasn't on your list. What's up? Ford versus Ferrari. High risk. I thought the whole point was to win the damned race. It was battling it out for a bit, but there just was a few movies that could edge it out a little bit. And I was beginning to think, okay. Yeah, spots are limited. Yeah. <laughs> Our list is like, yeah. If I could put a Nur honorable mention, it probably would have made it on. <laughs> as a Nur honorable mention. Mm. It's just, I was trying to think how many times more would I want to rewatch it. And I was like, okay, I might want to rewatch it a couple more times. Rockman, maybe a little bit more, and so on and so forth. Like, some of these movies I have watched again since then. That tells you how much I actually mm. love. So, what do you want to say about Ford versus a Ferrari? Matt Damon and... Christian Bale are both really good in it. The movie's like really funny, but it's also got a lot of heart. Like it's two like best friends, almost brothers kind of relationship. Then it's like breaks Matt Damon's heart when Christian Bale dies. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. And god damn is it sad actually. Yeah, so but... it's given the gravitas that it should be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> where he's like pretty much like coming around the wife and kids where it's like it's like I'm sorry I got your husband killed yeah he blames himself completely for it and everything it's like no he wanted to you know be out there and do that mm -hmm. and from what I read he did not die in vain 
apparently, based on that crash, they actually modified some of the safety features of the car that end up saving, I think it was Mario Andretti, they end up, end up saving his life. Mm -hmm. So, but it didn't die for nothing. Mm -hmm. They stable and save someone. And, yeah, it's just really good. And it's, I'm not even into, like, car racing, like NASCAR or anything, but, you know, I'm just like, like come, on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It made you care about an event that happened over 40 years ago. Yeah, kind of like with Argo. Mm -hmm. It's like you can look up and see how this happened. You can see it's like, oh, they made it out okay. But it's still just like, oh my god, just like, come on, it's like, get on the plane, get on the plane. It's like, yeah, it's just like, oh, like, get on the plane, come on. It's like, there's tension. And for those that are in this sort of thing, there's car porn. Oh, there's so much car porn. So much good car porn. Let's just put it that way. Because <laughs> there is like the, uh, Fast and the Furious car porn where it's just literally just the cars and you sort of hear them. But after a while they kind of just blend together. Here each car kind of almost has its own voice. It has its own, own distinctive sounds. So like the Ferraris have more the Ferrari that, you know, obviously they're European and faster. Swift, agile, and the Ford one sounds like a fucking tank. It's the best <laughs> way to describe it because it's goddamn Ford. <laughs> People still can't drive for shit. That Chris Bell at least can. <laughs> yeah. And that... Like, that pisses me off how much they screwed him over. Mm-hmm. It's like, really? It's like, y'all made this... And he's, like, trying so hard to be a team player and, you know, be this sport about it all and slow down so they can all three cross. Mm-hmm. But then they, they just, like, screw him over, just screw him out of his... I was like, mother... Really? That's asshole. Yeah, I was like, he's like, you yeah, feel for him. It's like time and time again, Ford has like screwed these guys over. Like, ah. it's like they helped y'all win. They helped put you on top. They made the car what it is. Mm hmm. And y'all want to be dicks. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you, you, you feel everything. Mm hmm. Yeah, I was like, you laugh when it's lighthearted. You know, you you feel their joy, you feel their pain. It's just it's all around feel good movie, except for the ending. Yeah, it just yeah. And again, I'm not even really a car person. It's like I'm not in, into car porn. Like I can see how you know some people are into that. It's like okay, it's like yeah, it's a, a nice little car and sounds kind of nice. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. And I'm not into, uh, like, car racing. I'm only interested they crash. And not those high speeds with these cars. That would be bad. Hmm. <laughs> so, do you want to move to my number two? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my number two, Megan has already talked about it, of course. Zombie Land Double Tap. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Columbus. Madison. This is Tallahassee. Hey, Paul Blart. Is this your dad? <laughs> oh, whoopsie. I forgot the seatbelt rule. Oh, so she knows the rules? I told her just a few of them. I, I know some people might think, oh, well, it's just, you know, it's a dumb zombie movie. It's a zombie movie that somehow managed to not only be better than its original, but it also managed to just come out of left field like we all figured that zombie land 2 was going to happen but not 10 years later and it still feels as fresh as the first one did because even then the first one technically was coming out in a big glut of you know zombie films sorry <laughs> and even then it's you know still oh it's a real good zombie comedy the closest approximation was Shaun of the dead this was a continuation of it and more adding to the whole world and because of that it just made such a full of life movie and yeah it's just ha ah, god it's so fun pardon me that's just the biggest thing we can say about zombie land double tap it's just it's pure unadulterated fun and i was so happy to see it and it felt like none of these characters aged which was a great thing you know except for obviously you know little rock <laughs> 
But even then. Yeah, like, that was the whole thing. It's like, I'm not a little girl anymore. Quit calling me little girl. Mm-hmm. And just, like, way be seen as, you know, a young woman. Yeah. Which, you know, is understandable. Yeah, because at that time, I would say the character's supposed to be obviously 10 years later. So she's, if she's not, you know, near 20, but she might be like 18, maybe she's 19 even. You know, if the zombie apocalypse wasn't going on, maybe she's thinking about college. Yeah. Thinking about where she wants to go, what she wants to do with her life. Yeah. So, and it just, it did some fantastic things. Like I said, it's actually good that we got more to do with the uh, Wichita and, uh, what's his name? What's Mark Zuckerberg's name? Yeah, um. <laughs> I went blank. Columbus. Yeah. Yeah, they gave them actually more than just, oh, well, they're trying actually, to Actually, that's not through. Mark Zuckerberg. I know. <laughs> he just keep calling Jesse Eisenberg Mark Zuckerberg because he wants Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook. And Eisenberg no, Zuckerberg. social network. Yeah, Eisenberg Zuckerberg was like, it's so, it's so close. Don't call him Mark Zuckerberg because he was in social network playing well, Mark that Zuckerberg. Too, I, that I, was the joke. I, I know. I'm just... I'm not getting her names confused. I'm calling him purposely that. It, it, it's a joke song, a it, joke. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you did that on purpose. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. But, whatever call, you want to pretend. I've been calling him that for a reason. Um, but no, um, yeah, it's... <sighs> It just, I just love the movie. I can't help it. It's one of the few good horror films we had last year. We haven't really had much in a way of really good ones. And I had to love it. Oh, so I guess we'll get to our number one, because looking at it, ours is the same. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's the same. Okay, so I want to do it at the same time? Sure. Oh, what? Oh, like, on three. One, two, three. Bootylicious. <laughs> no, uh, Avengers, Avengers in game. game. <laughs> I was what the gonna, hell else is going to be number one? I was going to make a joke and call it, I was going to say Laquisha, but I couldn't think of it in time. Couldn't think of that. Yeah, how could it not be Avengers Endgame? Even if you are a hardcore DCEU Earth Urbaners, you watched this movie. You probably watched it multiple times. And it's fantastic. It's one of the few movies that we saw multiple times in theaters. And it actually was able to be a fucking bleak ass movie throughout most of it. Yeah, but there's also kind of that message of hope for a better tomorrow. Yeah. And that's something that we could use for all of 2020. Hope for a better tomorrow, consider that uh, fucking virus ravaging the ends of the earth and killing everybody. No, it's not like killing everybody, it's just making a few people sick. And hope you all do get better if you do happen to watch us. And on top of everything, oh, wars. <laughs> Sometimes you really wish they were superheroes because of this. Yeah, if you watched Avengers Endgame and you didn't feel anything, I just got a year black yeah. soul human being. Because you got to feel for each and every one of these characters, no matter how much screen time, how little screen time they had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just... Oh my god, like the big fight scene was like so freaking epic. Everybody just goes like... <gasps> so many squee and jism moments. Avengers, assemble. Yeah, that was a... <laughs> each time, that was just me just painting the walls. <laughs> and not only that, but when I ever see and, Cap oh. with Mjolnir, it's like... Ee! Oh my man, <laughs> elbow popped her in that <laughs> I knew it. I was like, ah, damn it, that's awesome. Or Iron Man. It's like, oh the, my god. Just... I am Iron Man. It's... Or the, it's like, oh, it's like, uh, Dark Strange has been like five years. Uh, and... Oh, you're on like, you yeah, it. And then all Tony does is he just gives him it's a like, hug. I'm like, oh my god, it's like, I'm so, I'm like, I'm so happy you're here, kid. I'm so glad you're okay. <laughs> mm hmm. 
Like, just so glad to have, like, a surrogate son back, and then, oh my god, and then just rip out our hearts, throw it to the ground like they're, <laughs> like they're in the end zone, they just score a touchdown, and then doing a like, skin hat dance on it. It's like, <laughs> it's like, mmm. And then the hits just keep on coming with the, it's like, funerals, like, oh my god, really? Ah, <laughs> it's like, quit torturing me, Marvel. The real sign to me that this was the best movie, not just because it was the most entertaining, because it was one of the most entertaining, but because it was the most heartfelt, because it was one of the most heartfelt mm -hmm. movies you've seen in a while. But also, this is one of the few movies I can think of. I can't figure out what you can even remove, what you can cut down that would help in terms of pacing. Like, the movie is three hours long. That's its biggest detriment. But it never felt like it. Like, we watched it three <laughs> times in theaters. Never felt that three-hour sit. It felt quick. It felt fast. In fact, on subsequent viewings, it kept feeling faster to me. I was like, oh, this is going to happen, even though I know this is going to happen. And still, every time I bawled my fucking eyes out. <laughs> I was like, God damn it, movie. How are you doing this to me every time? <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's... That's the best movie of 2019. Hands down, Adventures in Game was... Anyone who says different... Their list is invalid. <laughs> but it is easily one of the... It's one of the culminations of 10 years of development. And it's also 10 years of love. And that's one of the things that I have to admire about the entire thing. This is guys who put forth all their heart, all their energy into doing a project out of pure passion and love. Yeah, and the culmination of the journey of all these characters... Most especially Iron Man. And Captain America. Yeah, and just... Like, we've been there along the way the whole time. And to see this culmination, it's like... Ugh. Yeah. But hey, hopefully... 2020 will still provide us with some fantastic movies. As we've seen so far this year, it's a hit or miss year. But we're, we need to get to the meat Mostly of good May. so far. Not going wood. Uh, you haven't had to watch what I've been watching. <laughs> uh, the best way I put it. But hey, we will get back with y'all hopefully in about a year's time with the best of 2020. And hopefully we're not having to fight to figure out what we can put on there. And hopefully it'll be more like this year where we're trying to figure out what do we have to cut. Because that's actually a lot harder than, well, I need to put this here. I, I, say that's, I think the better problem to have. Mm-hmm. But hey, so until then, stay safe, don't touch your eyeballs, and wash your hands. <laughs> so bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.